Hello everyone, we're taking a look today at another excerpt, or another set of excerpts from Blessed Columba Marmion. He's talking about a continuation from our past episode on sanctifying grace and uh, adoption, and we're continuing those, along those lines. We're looking at what the Incarnation has to do with that and what the impact the Incarnation has on that sonship. He says, Adam received for him and for his race the grace that made him a child of God. But by his fault, he lost that divine gift for himself and for his race too. Ever since his re revolt, we are all born sinners. That is, all of the race of Adam. Deprived of that grace which would make us children of God, we are, on the contrary, filii ire, enemies of God, and by nature, children of wrath. Filii ire, you know, children of wrath. There you have it. I took note that what was lost in Adam is elevated in Christ. And what was lost? Sonship. It's sonship that was lost. He gives a little Christology recap. I thought that maybe we should kind of go over that a little bit. The Most Holy Trinity created a humanity like our humanity, and from the first instant of its creation, united it in an ineffable, which should be kind of wondrous, a wonderful, beyond imagining, I guess you could say, also, an indissoluble manner, to the person of the Word, of the Son, of the second person of the Blessed Trinity. This God-man is Jesus Christ. This union is so close that there is only one single person, that of the Word. Perfect God, by His divine nature, the Word becomes by his incarnation, perfect man. And in making himself man, he remains God. That which he has been, he has remained. That which he was not, he has taken to himself. The fact of having taken a human nature so as to unite it to himself has not lessened the divinity. And what does that mean for us? What does that do for us? Well, this is so key, so central, and he's going to explain it. Here is a wonderful revelation that fills us with joy. This fullness of divine life, which is in Jesus Christ, is meant to overflow from him to us, to the whole of humankind. The central point of the divine plan, here's the key. The divine adoption. We've talked about divine adoption from the beginning, and we're laying it out here as just so central in Christ. So it is not simply that the Father has from all eternity chosen us. The Father chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. And that's a quote from Ephesians 1. We are sons like Jesus. We, by title of grace... Remember grace, the free and undeserved gift of sharing the divine life? We by title of grace, but he by nature. It is through Christ that we enter into the family of God. Just as the whole of Christ Jesus can be summed up by his divine sonship, so the whole of, the, of a Christian can be summed up by participation in this sonship through Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ. Our holiness is nothing other than that. The more we participate in the divine life through the communication Jesus makes to us of the grace of which he ever possesses the plenitude, or the fullness, the plenitude would be like the overflowing fullness. The higher is the degree of our holiness. Our holiness is based on the degree to which we participate in Christ, or which we completely live our lives in Christ. Never separate. Always united. And there you have that mark of unity. All the holiness that God has destined for souls 
has been deposited in the humanity of Christ. And this is the source at which we must draw. He says a prayer at the end here. It's, it's lengthy, but it's good for our meditation. If you're using this to pray, it's good for our meditation. So let's, let's use it here. O Christ Jesus, let us sing with the church in the gloria of the Mass. Thou alone art holy. Alone holy because thou possess the plenitude of divine life. Alone holy because we have wait upon thee alone for our holiness. Thou hast, as, your great, as thy great apostle says, become for us God-given wisdom and justice and sanctification. Our wisdom, our justice, our redemption, our holiness. In thee we find everything. In receiving thee, we receive everything. For in giving thee to us, thy Father, who, as thou thyself hast said, is our Father, has given us everything. How can he fail to grant us also all things with him, all the graces of salvation, and pardon, all the riches, all the supernatural fruitfulness, with which the world of souls overflows, come from thee alone. Let all praise, then, be rendered to thee, O Christ. And through thee, let all praise rise up to thy Father for the inexpressible gift he has made us of thee. Hopefully that was beneficial. If it was beneficial, please like and subscribe. Perhaps it'll be beneficial for others. And remember, stay hungry, my friend.